All right, I'm going to finish off this NXT thing. Get ready, Mike. You're going to have to fill in the last 40 minutes. What? So we had uh, Kane Carter, Katana Chance, beat Nikita Lyon, Zoe Stark to retain the titles. Aside from that stupid booking explanation, this was a very good match. And the baby faces, I guess they're all baby faces, Nikita and Zoe won when uh, Zoe got the pin. Then they did the stupid ruling and they restarted the match. And then uh, there was a bunch of rigmarole and then Nikita Lyons got pinned. And uh, Nikita was uh, passionately apologizing to uh, Zoe Stark later, and Zoe said it was all right. But I think that all of this was done to do what they did, where Zoe won them for the team, but then Nikita lost them for the team. And I think there may be some trouble coming. That's my thought. We had Ilya Dragunov calling out J.D. McDonough for later. We had T-Bar burning his mask. Actually, I think he actually burned Marseille's mask, someone told me. but Then we had, actually, I forgot this segment. This segment sucked. Wesley's out there to thank the fans because he won the uh, North American title. Grayson Waller comes out. He wants a shot. This leads to a, an, an appearance by Truth. And they did so much. This stupid segment went on for an hour, dude. Like, I get it. You do a little bit of Truth comedy. I don't need to see it for 15 minutes. So anyway, uh, I don't even know what came of this. I think I think Truth and Grayson are going to have a match. Next week. Oh, great. We had Edris hyping up Malik Blade for their tag title match later. How? How did he do it? An Eminem song. You've got to be kidding me. Whatever whatever you need, dude. Whatever. Never in the history of man. And I look, I don't know every African-American in the world, okay? But I have never heard of one African-American hyping up another African-American to the strands of Eminem. Well, now you I have. I don't know if this is true. Now you have. I guess I have. Yes. I guess I have. I think this is all kayfabe. Kayfabe, the world of. Paulo Cruz teased that he is going to challenge Braun Breaker next week. We had Shotzi beating Lash Legend. I've said more than enough about this. So then, this is a this is a segment I got a lot of emails about. Julius and and Brutus come out, <laughs> so and uh, Brutus is thanking his brother. Remember how Julius got his hand slammed in the ambulance and just didn't sell it because he was so excited to do this match. Well, this week they've actually got uh, stuff on his hands, like he's, late he's onset injured. injury. Right? Yeah, there. it really it really swelled up when the adrenaline wore off. Yeah. But anyway, Brutus is thanking him for saving his NXT career. He says, I love you, brother. That was very sweet. And uh, so then, you know, Brutus says, listen, you did you did what you needed to do. Now I need to do what I need to do. He says, Damon Kemp, get your ass right out here right now for a beating. Even though this guy should be, like, dead, given the beating he took on, on Saturday. So uh, Damon appears on the screen, says he's not medically cleared. And suddenly, who should attack the Creed's? But yes, Veer and Sangha. I like it. Sangha is now a heel. And, uh, you know, everyone was really mad about it because I think Shawn Michaels did some sort of interview and he said something like, you know, we're going to make sure these guys are positioned the way they should be. Come and of course, if you've watched the show, let me tell you the way Sangha should be. He's the biggest baby face in all of NXT. But yeah. now he's a heel. Good. But, but if you watched this, he did go to do a choke slam on Julius, and he paused. He could not bring himself to do it. And so Veer came in and killed him with a clothesline and then fired up Sangha, and then Sangha hit the clothesline on uh, Brutus. So uh, I think what's happening here, which I'm totally fine with, by the way, is they have cast him as a heel, manipulated by Veer. Everybody w remembers the beloved Sangha. And I think the story is going to be that they will have a heel run, which is fine, have some heel tag team matches. And then ultimately, he's going to do that big turn back baby face and lay out Veer. And hey, listen, you got to tell stories in wrestling. I'm, I'm fine with this. Let him be a heel for a while and then do that big turn. Pretty deadly. And Edris Anofe and Malik Blade. It's a good match. And Edris and Malik have improved a lot. Malik has also put on some size, so he's not so skinny anymore. 
And Pretty Deadly is a great working heel team. Thought it was a very good match. Some great near falls. They had one near fall at the end that was so awesome. These fans thought for sure that the titles changed hands. But uh, they cut him off. Pretty Deadly hit spilt milk and uh, got the pin. So I like that match a lot. J.D. McDonough cut a promo on Elia. We had the McKenzie interview with Zoe where Nikita is just apologizing profusely. Yeah. And then uh, that's all I saw. So tell us about the uh, schism and their new member, Mike. Oh, that's what you meant when you said you wanted to meet me. Yeah, I, I, that's all I minutes. saw. I haven't seen the last <laughs> last uh, 30 minutes. I thought you were going to like pick up the kids or something like that. I'm making no. some talking points here. But uh, first of all, I can't believe you didn't even mention anything about uh, – the, the new Brutus Bomb t uh, shirt. Yeah, it's that got a new t shirt, Brutus Bomb. Love that thing. Well, I ain't going to anyway, buy it. Look, the only thing, the, well, the really, the bottom line is they decided to unleash the fourth schism member that has been walking around with them now. And it happened to be when they pulled off the hood, Simone Johnson, Pebbles herself, the Rock's daughter, with. Red eyes in, and she cut a very short promo saying that, you know, the schism has welcomed her in. They believe in, in who she can be, not who she should be, and that their voyage is just beginning. So that's what that was. You didn't hear or see anything about this? Are you well, okay? No, with... I mean, I knew it happened, but I haven't seen it, so I don't want to comment too much on it yet. But you okay with Ava Simone or uh, whatever her name is uh, being a member of the schism? Here I don't know. Because... Maybe it'll be great. Who knows? Well, here's I don't look. know. Forget know about everyone... the stupid gimmick, right? Forget, throw that out for a second. All three of those guys can work really well. Like Grizzled Young Veterans were a very good tag team. They have a lot of mileage on them. They've been around. They are good. And Joe Gacy, you know, a lot of people, they really, because of the Gimmick reputation. Gimmick sucks, but he works well. Yes. The reputation that CZW has, when you think Joe Gacy came from there, it's like uh, some people may look down. Well, Drew Gulak came from there. A lot of guys have come, come from there because they're very good technical wrestlers. And Joe Gacy is not, I think, to that level, but he's very, very good. So if you want to put her in a team where she's got the ability to learn and, you know, knock some things around and try, you know, I guess this is the way to do it. They were going to change her name anyway, so I guess why not? Then what's next? I don't know. I guess still pull up what happened Indy here. Hartwell and Saul Ruka live. Okay. Yeah, live. And thankfully, it was short. It was not short enough. It was very, very bad. Saul Rocha probably should not be on NXT Level Up or whatever the name of that show is, let alone on the main show. But she's got to go. And Indy Hartwell, I like a lot. But the problem with Indy is... She look. She's NXT for life, and she's gonna have a good, you know, role there for a long time. Hopefully, hopefully for her sake, she gets Dexter Loomis back at some point, so that act can continue on. But she is truly NXT for life because at this point, I can't see her getting any better either. Uh, Chase University with Bodie. All right. So unfortunately for Bodie, he missed class. He wasn't there. No. Oh, reason yeah, because he was doing the Brian and Vinny show last night. That's where he was. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's. Apparently, that's uh, actually on the front page of the website right now for all of those yeah. uh, who are interested in that sort of thing. Bodie behind the, uh, the the board there. But unfortunately, since he was not there, uh, you know, uh, dude took his seat there. What's his name? Duke. Duke Hudson took Duke his seat. Duke Hudson. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the, what's your girl's name there? Thea Hale. Yeah. Her pen ran out of ink. He happened to have one. Why she my girl? But she, you take great offense when I called her Leah Hale. You, you called her upset. the wrong name. I'm sorry for correcting. I called a lot of people the wrong God. name. You get exceptionally excited when it comes to her. But bottom line is she borrowed a pen. He ended up stealing one from another student. They took notes on what was happening. Somehow this became you. my fault that you don't know anybody's name. God. And bottom line is, unfortunately for Bodie, he lost his seat. So we'll have to see where that goes. What was next? Uh, I mean, we had uh, whatever that new thing is. What are you talking about that? Scripts. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, some words came up. Uh, they, they called the operator. A bunch of stuff came on the screen. You know, it's something. Scripts is coming. I have no idea what that is. What, what uh, do you got next? 
Ily Dragunov and uh, J.D. McDonald in the main event. That was a good match. The oh, you mean McDonough? This, oh, okay. Just Ronald checking. McDonald. Th- he might as well be Ronald McDonald because I think the whole act right now is kind of clownish for him with this whole out for blood thing. But they did actually draw some blood last night on Ilya Dragunov. If you watch the highlights on WWE, they have it in black and white. And there J.D. McDonough was with his body scissors choking out Ilya Dragunov, his mouth filled with blood pouring all over the place, and he couldn't even tap out. The referee had to call the match. This feud must continue, and let's be honest, most of us didn't see them feud in NXT UK. They are both very good workers. It is a very good feud. J.D. McDonough's gimmick, not so good. Yeah, why did his voice change when he did that promo? I don't know. That was goofy. Your Booker T there at the end? I didn't see the end. Oh, man. I like this Booker T. What the hell? Well, I mean, what the hell? He's bleeding from the mouth, dude. It's crazy. What part do you love about this job, Granny? Nothing. When you you irritate me? (laughs) You make me mad? I I guess seeing seeing you guys. When you needle me? Quit talking over me. Sorry. If Granny, this person asks, could leave only one thing in her will... For Brian. <laughs> <laughs> what would it be? Rufus versus Roman Reigns. 2016. Rufus. Rufus, Rufus on barricade. Rufus comes back. Drops Reigns on the top rope. Rufus has a temper tantrum because only two count. Do you know that we put a clip of you on the internet last week? And these people on the internet are so dumb... That they thought that we hired an actor to play you. No. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, eh, forget yeah. about it. If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety-nine cents per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo, and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.